On January 12, 2017, Amazon launched Anime Strike, an anime-focused subscription service in the United States. It was launched on Amazon Channels, a program that allowed Amazon Prime customers to subscribe to various channels like HBO, Stars, and Showtime through their platform. If you decided to subscribe to Anime Strike, you wouldn't have to see any ads, but it would cost you $4.99 a month. In addition to video on demand, the service would also be simulcasting various shows from Japan, like Blue Exorcist Kyoto Saga. In order to pull more fans into the service, Amazon had acquired the exclusive US streaming rights for several anime, including Scum's Wish and The Great Passage. Anime Strike was Amazon's first attempt at creating an original channel. As for why they decided to target anime fans, they thought that they could fill a gap left open by traditional media. According to Michael Paul, Amazon's vice president of digital video and the lead of Amazon channels. With anime in particular, there's a strong, passionate audience that is underserved by traditional pay TV. The service faced criticism immediately upon release, with its price at the center of attention. As mentioned previously, Amazon channels were only available to Amazon Prime customers, and each channel required its own separate subscription, meaning that you'd have to pay $99 a year, or $12.99 a month, for Amazon Prime, and then an additional $4.99 a month if you wanted to watch Anime Strike. This would make it significantly more expensive than other anime streaming services like Crunchyroll and Funimation, and still more expensive than less anime-focused services like Hulu and Netflix. And unlike Funimation and Crunchyroll, there wasn't a cheaper, ad-supported option for viewers. If all you wanted to do was watch anime on Amazon's new service, it wouldn't be cheap. When Anime News Network asked about why they decided to charge an additional fee on top of a Prime subscription, here was Michael Paul's response. Well, the definition of TV has changed a lot over the last couple years. At the highest level, there's increased customer choice with the growth of on-demand programming and the proliferation of channels and ways to get those channels. It's become all about bringing customers what they want to watch, when and where they want to watch it. That's what we've done with Anime Strike. There's a passionate group of fans who would love to have anime content all in one place, and to do that made sense, to create a separate, dedicated channel. There's much more anime content available as part of the subscription than what could be found in Prime Video, which is similar to other channels like HBO or PBS Kids, for example. While it would feature more than 1,000 episodes and movies, Anime Strike's catalog wasn't very impressive when compared to Crunchyroll and Funimation. But with the spring anime season just around the corner, they didn't waste much time. In March, they signed deals with both Sentai Filmworks and Aniplex, and on April 5, 2017, Anime Strike announced their spring lineup, which featured 12 shows, with 10 of them being Anime Strike exclusives. And these exclusive agreements highlighted another problem that fans had with the service, further fragmentation. After Funimation and Crunchyroll's partnership agreement was signed in 2016, it looked like anime fans would finally have an all-in-one streaming service. If you wanted to watch simulcasted anime, a Crunchyroll subscription would get you most of the way there. If you wanted dubs, the same was true for Funimation. But with Anime Strike in the mix, and gobbling up several popular exclusives, this was no longer true, and it seems as if Amazon's strategy was paying off. In a statement to Forbes, Amazon announced that Anime Strike was performing better than they expected. Anime Strike is performing great. Signups are higher than initial projections as we add more content and more features. Besides new episodes every week and new shows every season, we've been able to introduce new things that anime fans weren't able to get before, like the ability to download and watch thousands of episodes or movies on Anime Strike to their smartphone and tablet, which is awesome for anyone who'll be traveling a lot this summer or a free manga every month from Comixology and all of those signups were from the United States. From the very beginning, Amazon hadn't been willing to say anything about releasing Anime Strike in other markets. Amazon Prime Video only just became available to Canada this winter, when it was also rolled out to the rest of the world. But even now, it feels like the rest of the world is an afterthought for Amazon. The Prime Video app still isn't available on any Canadian app store for any of the devices that are currently plugged into my TV. And the actual Anime Strike service isn't available here at all, which means that what few shows they do have are one or more episodes behind, and we have no way to access their premium simulcast service. When asked about this on launch day, they didn't have anything to say. And when asked a similar question by Forbes in May, the response was a little longer, but it still didn't say anything. News slowed down until June 30th, when Anime Strike announced their summer lineup. However, there was a significant drop off in the number of exclusives. Out of the 11 new shows in the lineup, only three of them were exclusives. And while no one knew it at the time, this was the beginning of the end. News would dry up over the course of the summer season, and the channel's social media accounts went silent. Anime Strike would release its fall lineup on October 3rd, and it would only include two exclusive shows. News would dry up again, and the winter season would pass without Anime Strike releasing a new exclusive lineup. Then, on January 5th, 2018, less than a year after the service was launched, Anime Strike was shut down. All of the content that was originally exclusive to Anime Strike would be available through Prime Video, and all existing subscriptions to the channel would be automatically cancelled. Despite its problems, it was surprising to see the service shuttered so quickly. Amazon was, at least initially, willing to dump lots of money into the service in order to secure exclusive streaming rights and pull in customers. 
but it looks like at some point in the middle of 2017, things changed. According to Justice Avakis, the answer man, Anime Strike's demise wasn't solely because it disappointed the market it was trying to serve though. The service was one part of a much bigger picture. The fact that Amazon's streaming service just isn't doing well in general. The last quarter of 2017 was a tumultuous one for Amazon Studios. After a promising early start, the network spent an ungodly sum of money on shows that ultimately failed. Anime Strike and its sister service Hera, which specialized in Bollywood movies, were part of the vision of that old regime. When the new management took over, they no doubt saw how the two secondary services were performing and decided not to continue throwing money at them. We can only guess as to their logic, but they no doubt have bigger fish to fry. Rather than continuing to throw money at a small audience that's turned hostile towards them, I'm sure they think it a better idea to concentrate on making a new mainstream hit. Anime Strike is an interesting note in the history of anime streaming. Despite lasting for less than a year, it managed to become, probably, the most hated anime streaming service ever. Thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video, and subscribe if you'd like to be notified whenever I release something new. Did any of you give Anime Strike a shot when it was still around? Please let me know in the comments. Once again, thank you all for watching. Until next time.